after watching the tape, um, sulking a little bit, to be honest with you. Super proud of how hard we played. The intensity level, uh, the energy level that we play with, really 60 minutes, the attitudes, even late in the game when it was clear that we weren't going to be able to uh, to make the comeback that we wanted, could not ask for better out of our guys. Conversations on the sideline, even coming off the field and into the locker room, they've responded perfectly. A group of guys that felt like we didn't play our best ball. Coach, we're going to get it right. Um, encouraging each other in the locker room, again, could not ask for better. Honest opinion of the game is that we uh, – had tons of energy and effort, but just had really poor execution in a lot of areas. And and honestly, a lot of that falls on me and the staff. I don't think we we didn't do a great job. Um, not so much not preparing, but didn't do a great job of uh, adapting throughout the course of the game. We, um, we've made really, really good adjustments in the first three games, I think, that gave us a chance to to – go out in the second half and 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 make some plays that, that got us back in the game. I think we adjusted poorly. We got out coached. They made better adjustments than we did. One indication is five out of seven in the first quarter on third down and then one for 10 the rest of the game. They clearly made better defensive adjustments than we made offensively. Um, some tempo issues where we had 12 guys on the field defensively, 10 guys on the field defensively, not ready to play. Uh, you know, we we did not respond. And, and I think a lot of that starts with me. Um, should have called a timeout and avoided a delay on the field goal, even though it's well within our range. Should have used the timeout there. Love the way the punt fake looked originally when the defense started to change late. Should have burned a timeout or, or checked out of it. We didn't do that. So strategically, uh, we got our coach and outplayed. The good thing is you can tell competitively we can play with those guys. I'm not sure that that we really knew exactly what the matchups look like till you play them, uh, but feel comfortable that we can play with those guys. We just got to play better. They made the right plays to win. They played the best game. Uh, coaches made the right adjustments. We did not. But um, it is something we definitely can learn from, and we can get better, and we need to because well, I think we're playing, again, the best team that we will have seen all year on our schedule on Friday night on a short week. So we don't want to – we don't want to continue to make some of the same mistakes we made, either as coaches or as players. But I have no doubt that uh, our guys will come ready to work today. And I know coaches have been up here nonstop since the game was over. We're going to fix some things. We're going to get better. What questions do you have? Coach oh, Jorge Sableton, I do have a rules question for you. After Calvin Tyler's long run to get you within the red area, um, you guys subbed out Calvin and Boise was allowed to sub in, but they took their sweet time doing it. It seemed like, can they not reset the play clock or hold the play clock for that? Because they took a lot of time and that kind of put you in a tough spot. They, they can, it is up to the officials discretion. If they feel like that the opposing team is abusing the allotted time, which is very, very uh, subjective on what that allotted time is. They can reset the play clock. Uh, or they can just clearly move out of the way and let us start to play. Um, we had a couple instances where play clock was not correct. I think we reset one that shouldn't have been upstairs, and and uh, and then there may have been one that should have been reset, and that may be the one you're referring to. But everybody kind of takes the same approach. If you sub, they're going to probably sub somebody, and none of them are in a big hurry to do so and are not obligated to do it at a really fast pace. It just needs to be reasonable. Every officiating crew has probably a different definition of what reasonable is. Thanks, Cal Lewis. Uh, in watching the film, did they take uh, uh, Devin Thompson out of the game after the first quarter, or what happened there? Not, not necessarily. They did adjust, and, and clearly when you got a guy's leading the country and receiving, and he comes out in the first quarter and – and, and get some balls in his hands, um, you're going to make some adjustments. They did. We didn't respond great to those. He did have a couple more opportunities later in the game, but it was clearly part of their plan to to make it hard for us to get the ball to him. Uh, and, and we just didn't respond um, really, really well outside of that. Now, I, I will say this. Honestly, we moved the ball up and down the field fairly well. We outgained him yardage-wise. It was where – where the problem was for us in this particular game was third down later in the game as the game progressed and obviously getting the ball in the end zone. 
uh, you know, when we had the ball in the red zone. We had first and goal at inside the uh, – we had four drives inside the the red zone and, and only got uh, only got field goals. So um, I think that was more along those lines than it was taking him out was um, was collectively – utilizing the other weapons that we do have on the field because we're not a one-man show. We don't want to ever appear as if we are. Uh, but but being able to punch the ball in the end zone once we got down in, in, in short short areas. Coach Jake Nielsen, on Saturday, you ran it 42 times as opposed to passing it 31 times. Were you more confident in your rushing attack on Saturday? And what is some of the things you can do adjustment-wise to um, make sure the passing attack is more efficient on Friday? You know, I don't really care if we run it or throw it more. I want to do what we have to do. You know, balance to me is taking what they give you and being effective at it uh, and efficient at it. And we were in open field. We did not run the ball well in the red zone. That That is probably the biggest where we're just kind of a continuation of the previous question. Um, when you play a five-man box and you're going to double cover some of your wideouts, which they chose to do, then we have to run the ball well. We ran it really, really well at times. But when we ran out of space, we have to be able to either win in one on one matchups outside or we have to, you know, make a guy miss and or be physical enough to go ahead and run the ball in the end zone. We didn't do either inside the red zone. So I don't care if we throw it 60 times or we run it 60 times. What I want to do is score points. And at some point, you run out of space. When you run out of space, you have to be perfect and you have to be physical. And they were more physical than us in the red zone, and we didn't make the plays we needed to. So I think it's a little bit of a statistically how many times we threw it or how many times we ran it, I think that gets a little bit skewed. Uh, that's not necessarily the concern, if that makes sense. Coach, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. BYU has some uh, really good wide receivers, Romney, both Nakua brothers, uh, Proven running back in Al Algiers, uh, two proven quarterbacks, one who is a very dynamic runner. How challenging is it to game plan for an offense like BYU? Well, I think it starts with how good they are up front. I think their smallest dude, 6'5", about three 300. Uh, super, super long. Just getting to any of the guys you just mentioned, either getting to the quarterback in a timely fashion where you're not covering forever or being able to fill the gaps when they put – two tight ends on the field with that massive offensive line. I mean, they present a million problems. Um, clearly the best built football team we have played. It'll just ramp it up another notch this week. And huge challenge to be able to match up to big, tall wideouts, two different quarterbacks that can both deliver the ball. Um, but I think it all starts up front with the best looking old line we'll see probably all year. And, one of the best O-lines in the country. I mean, I don't know what they're ranked now, but it's high and it's warranted because they're playing great ball. So a follow-up question to that is, uh, yeah, I mean, I think people, I think a lot of people are a little blown away how dominant they were in the trenches against Utah and defensive line as well. Um, what, what, what is the biggest key to success against a, a, a physical, experienced uh, offensive and defensive line? Well, we're not going to just overpower them. We know that. We're going to have to use speed and quickness. I do think team speed is in our favor. I think quickness is in our favor. Size and power is not. So we got to try to make it our kind of game on both sides of the ball. we we got to try to frustrate them up front. we try to get guys free, use our quickness and our speed to speed the clock up for them. Offensively, we got to get them out in space, make them uncomfortable. I mean, if we play to their strengths and just try to play, you know, hit you in the mouth, try ball all night long. We're probably going to be pretty frustrated. We want to make them try to play our tempo ball, faster pace, uh, sideline to sideline, a lot of grass. That that gives us the best chance to win. And we, uh, we've we been physically uh, probably outmatched in a couple of these games all year. And if you look at just size and strength and power, but our speed and our effort and our, our execution out in space has is, is allowed us to win three games. Um, it's not going to be different here. The same plan would have worked uh, Saturday against Boise had we executed better. We didn't execute well. We, we played very poorly in a lot of areas. The, the plan wasn't the issue. It was executing the plan, you know, efficiently and effectively. So, um, you know, we got to make it our kind of game. Uh, there, there's no doubt. We know how they're built. We know how we're not. 
but we do have some advantages that we need to lean on, and, and, and that's really on both sides of the ball is speed and quickness, and hopefully that's going to be a factor in a big way. Coach, my question would be, where are you now with your quarterback situation? Because, I mean, I kind of felt the first time when we talked, you kind of wanted to go with one eventually. You kind of felt that way. Where are you now Do you feel like with Beakley and Bonner? Uh, well, Bonner's our starting quarterback. I, I felt like that um, we uh, we tried to change the pace. Uh, things weren't going great. Obviously, we were we were str struggling a little bit to finish uh, drives. We planned on changing the pace with Peasley. Um, you know, we're we're going to be a one quarterback system going forward. They both know that, and and we are going to use Peasley at times, uh, sub package wise. But it looked a little bit more like a two quarterback system than than we planned or that I want, I think it'll be clear who the starting quarterback is moving forward. And we will, we will absolutely have some, some opportunities to get Peasley involved. And then quarterbacks, do you see anything between, I mean, Hall obviously is a great runner for BYU. Do you see, what do you see between he and Romney Hall? Well, Romney's your set in the pocket and deliver the ball to a bunch of guys in pretty, pretty much anywhere on the field. He can get it to them. And with that old line, he seems to be really, really comfortable yeah, you know, the athletic aspect uh, of a running dual threat quarterback obviously brings another dynamic. It's two different kind of looks. We're going to have to be prepared for both and probably won't know which one's going to be the guy until until they, they tee it up. Um, short week with, his, with how Romney played and with the injury and the, kind of the schedule they have still ahead of them. You would lean to thinking that that's who you're going to see, but but who knows? We've got to be prepared for either. They're both quality players, present big problems. Again, it does start up front, regardless of which quarterback. Uh, we're going to have to find a way to make the uh, the offensive line uncomfortable, which is hard to do considering how they're built. Coach, I love. Oh, Ajay, go, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Jake, please. All right, Coach, I love you, my. My big picture questions and stuff, but um, just your thoughts on BYU. Obviously, it's not a conference game, but it's an in-state game and a little bit of a rivalry. So, just your thoughts on on the rivalry, pretty much. Well, I've been everybody that I've met since I moved to town has made it really clear to me how much they this rivalry means to them, and this is one we got to win and need to win. I, I get all that. I love college ball for rivalry's sake. Uh, I've been a part of some good rivalries in the past. Uh, I'll learn more and more about this one. And not to say that it's not a huge uh, rivalry and not to say that it's not something that is important. But to me right now, the most important thing is the attitude and the mindset of our football team moving forward uh, and, and making sure that we're in the right spot. And, and we can't be nearly as focused on BYU as we can at, at us getting better. There's a lot of good football ahead of this team. Uh, I don't want to let one game that we played poorly derail that. Uh, I want to focus on us now. I want to beat BYU as bad as anybody in the Cache Valley, uh, but but for probably even different reasons. This is just happens to be the next opportunity for our team to show what we're capable of, and we didn't do that Saturday, and hopefully Friday night we will look like the team that we are we are really capable to be. Um, so I mean, you're kind of caught in the middle. Uh, you cannot get so caught up in the uh, rivalry aspect and who we're playing aspect that you lose sight of. We got to improve, and we got to improve this week. Uh, at that point, then we'll start worrying about who and where and how many years and all that stuff, if that makes sense. Coach, what challenges do you have when you face back-to-back -back weeks of really good football teams, but this one being on a short week and having to prep for that? Yeah, short week doesn't help, but they got to play on a short week too. We played earlier on Saturday than they did, so we get a little bit more time. The physical side of, of maybe guys not being quite ready to play that, that it got dinged up, that's always a concern. Uh, we didn't come out of the game in terrible shape, but but we're we're going to have some guys that are going to be day to day. I'm sure that that you like the extra day for that. Um, what they do offensively, you know, it at least kind of looks a little bit like what we've seen a couple times. So it's not a it's not the same as going into a triple or something completely different. The sheer size and and athletic build that they have on both sides of the ball is the biggest challenge here, regardless of it's Saturday or Friday game. Guys will know what to do. How do we match up? Do we execute well? Uh, so, you know, we, we got every opportunity to be ready. Let me ask you on the in-state thing, Coach. I know you can't comment on commitments to the program, but it looks like you've made a real emphasis towards the state of Utah so far. Can you talk about that just a little bit? And 
does this game then become important for that kind of stuff? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, if you can uh, if you can win against an interstate opponent, especially a, uh, an opponent that's uh, in the top twenty, that's got the uh, the kind of uh, notoriety they've got. It's huge for recruiting. We we want we want in state talent to stay at home. We want to be competitive on every in state player. We've made a commitment of starting here first. One of the you know the, the things I love about this particular place is there's enough in state talent here to have have a tremendous foundation, especially up front on the old offense and defensive line. If you look at their roster, most of their guys are in state guys. We'd love to have those guys playing for us. Uh, so. Yeah, beating them head to head and showing that we can compete with them and Utah if they decide to play us, we'd love that. I'd love it every year, uh, but um, but we also have to stay focused on getting better and improving. And so I want to make sure our focus is on us, uh, you know, initially. Uh, but but there's a residual effects of winning this game. Absolutely, it proves that we can play with anybody, especially the teams in our state. So you've been really happy so far with what you've seen from in-state recruiting, and you feel like you're good presence around the state so far with what's happening there? Yeah, I think we've been really well received in the state. Uh, you know, not having a really um, relationships built with a lot of our staff. I think Al and, 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 and DJ have done a phenomenal job. Some of the other guys that are off the field that have connections here in the state that have played here and know the area have done a great job of getting us really kind of uh, connected here in the state. We've made offers. We've got commitments from guys that we really like that we think could play at, at either one of the uh, you know, four-year universities here in the state, you know, Division One schools. So uh, we we feel like we've got a good base. We're always going to start at home. Uh, but you mentioned, yeah, if, if we can if we can win against those teams, then it just it, it, I think it just kind of bolsters our competitive uh, I don't know momentum maybe. Coach Boise State secondary, they were just so long, and I mean Skinner's six four. He's really really good football player. How valuable was that game for your wide receivers to, to to match up against a team with that kind of length and athleticism? Well, it's a challenge, uh, and not everybody's built like that. They have the luxury. They've done a great job recruiting and developing some long, rangy guys. Uh, at times, we did a good job of separating. At times, we did not. It's an eye-opening experience for you, I think. You go into um, you go into games when, when people decide we're going to match up and get hands on you and play man. You learn real quick uh, that you've got to work extremely hard uh, in practice every day to to perfect your craft. And then you've got to work extremely hard every snap in the game to create separation. At times we did well, at times we did not. So, you know, in the second half, I think we really struggled to to get the separation we needed. And we that's why I think you see on third down, we, we really struggled on third down in the second half. Uh, it's, it's motivation to improve and get better. It's also motivation for us recruiting-wise to recruit and develop, to be able to play and match up against that size and length that we're going to see, you know, we're going to see again this week. We saw against Boise. We saw uh, against Washington State. We're probably going to see several more times this season. What you brought up a lot. Your team then, we've talked, to, we've seen the defensive line and the linebackers play well. How has the secondary play, do you think, up to go now? Oh, at times we played really, really well. I, I would say consistency is probably the thing we're challenged with the most. Uh, we uh, we had some, some blitzes called that didn't get run. Uh, we had some that got, didn't get run effectively. We we overlapped coverage in some areas where we should have been uh, a little bit more disciplined and, and gave up some big throws. We we missed some opportunities, I think, in some downs that were high percentage pass tendencies, and and we we didn't play them as you know in that area. So I would say consistency. We, we'll ch- we don't mind challenging the ball at times. They run to the ball. They're 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 I think they're physical and competitive. But um, but we're still showing some inconsistency at times, either with technique or with schematically knowing exactly what we need to do. If we can clean some of that up, we will get much, much better there. Coach, you mentioned um, you need the, the focus and the energy from your team to stay at that high level. and That's got to be tough when you've had so many tough games to start the season. So who are some of the individuals and players on your team that are kind of leading that charge and keeping the energy up in the locker room and everything? You know, honestly, we got a ton of guys doing that. I saw at the end, you know, towards the end of the game, late in the game, uh, Nick Henniger and, and Byron Vaughn's two guys that stood out over on the defensive side that were, I mean, very vocal about, man, let's go, let's finish well. On the way in the locker room, one of the first guys to find me uh, was uh, Brandon Bowling, Logan Bonner, uh, you know, 
um, Kyle uh, came up to me right there in the middle field, uh, Van Leeuwen, and, and saying, Coach, hey, keep your head up. We're good. Several, I mean, a bunch of guys, uh, those are just a few. I, I can't even come close to – the attitudes were perfect. I mean, nobody likes losing. We don't accept losing, but everybody had the right attitude that, hey, we could have played better. We can play with these guys. Coach, we're ready to go back to work. Energy in the building was the same way yesterday. I expect it will be again today. Uh, I, I think the majority of our team, I, I can name them all. Uh, I think if there are guys that are frustrated and and down, it's it's um, you know disappointment in 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 missing an opportunity, but but not not frustrated with the process. We know we're getting better, and the fact that we could be sitting here, you know, we could be sitting here one and three, not three and one, and and uh, honestly, it could be sitting here zero oh and four, considering how North Dakota came out and played early in the game. So. Uh, it's a balance. It's a balance, but we got plenty of buy-in and a ton of great attitudes. I'm, I'm reluctant to just give you a few names. I feel like I'm missing way too many. Coach, uh, I know the result didn't turn out your way, but the student body came out and showed out for you guys against Boise State. I know you're asking for that same thing for a blackout on Friday night. Yeah, I, I hope you know. I hope they're disappointed in the result, but not uh, but not disappointed in the product. Uh, I think uh, hopefully they've seen enough in the first four games to realize this is a. This is year one of new staff, new systems, new people, a lot of new players. And we've already, I think, uh, come out and shown this group's going to play 60 minutes. We're worth coming to watch. And we're going to be fun and competitive. We need them bigger than ever on Friday night. We need uh, a packed house, electric, loud. We need to make BYU as uncomfortable. This is an opportunity to beat a top 20 team, an in-state opponent, and a rival. And and hopefully it's sold out and uh, standing room only. And our student section is uh, crazier than ever. Hey, Patrick, Jake Nielsen, Utah Statesman. Um, what are just uh, some of your overall thoughts on just how your first four games in and out uniform have gone and how the, the defense has played thus far this season? Uh, throughout the first few, first four games, it's been, it's been crazy, you know. Uh, it's crazy how our defenses came together from spring to now and how, and how much we have accomplished as a whole. So I just, just think that everything is going well besides what happened last week. Patrick Al Lewis from KBNU Radio. Have you heard much about the rivalry of BYU? What do you know about the rivalry that we have with them, uh, you being a new guy around here? Uh, I heard a lot about it, you know, um, saying that, uh, you know, BYU comes to town, everybody's just is always excited about them and not Utah State. But, you know, being a part of Utah State and, and knowing that that's our rivalry now is just, you know, trying to get people to, like, be here for us, like give them a reason to be here for us instead of BYU. Last up again then, in specific, your position. Talk about what you're at that defensive end spot. At times it seems like you are on a big rush. Sometimes you're going inside. Talk about that position you play and, and what you try to do at your spot. In my position, you know, in our defense, we're, we're athletes. We can drop back in covers, we rush the pass, and we move a lot. So it's, it's um, uh, in our defense, it's a lot of thinking at defensive end, but, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Patrick, kind of a two part question for you. First, what's it like just coming from Miami to Logan, Utah? What's, is that a little bit of a culture shock? And then secondly, you got to follow your coach, Coach Bond out here. So how's that been to be able to stay in his same system and uh, for him to still be your coach? Uh, just coming out here is a big difference, especially coming from coming from Miami. You know, it's just, everything's just different here. I had to get used to the weather. I had to get used to, like, you know, different teammates, like coming in a new program, just trying to figure out how things are in the town in a small town. And then coming here with Banda, of course, Banda made everything kind of easier because we're, 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 have, we're in the same system. So it wasn't really a big change. You know, the biggest thing was probably just adapting to a new atmosphere. That's pretty much it. Is he the reason why you came here, uh, Patrick? He's part of the reason. He's part of the reason. What else entered into it then? Uh, this me wanted to be like wanting to get away from home because I'm I'm originally from Miami as well, and I felt like me getting away from home, I'd be 
I'll be focused on more on my uh, myself and, and what I want to accomplish in life. Patrick, Jason Turner from the Herald Journal. I'm, I'm sure the Boise State game was kind of a perfect balance for the defense in that you guys uh, made some uh, pretty significant improvements. I can only think of the two real explosive plays that they had, which was, uh, you know, quite a, quite a bit fewer than the Air Force game. Um, and I'm sure there you, you guys felt you left some plays on the field as well. So uh, how, how encouraged were you by the performance and how, how motivated are you to correct those things moving forward? Oh man, I never been so ready to get back to work after the after the um, after the loss of Boise State. You know that game, it was just uh, you know we came to the game ready. You know we weren't thinking we were going to lose. You know we had that mindset like we can't lose. And I think like us being like overly overly like hyped about the game, we went out there and made like simple mistakes and they just took advantage of it. But. Us coming back this week and having a another big opponent is a is a big thing for us. So I never been so ready to get back to work. Patrick RJ Salveson here. Uh what have you seen? Have you watched any film on BYU? What have you seen out of them? What stands out to you? Yeah, I watched the film. There some big guys over there. When, and they play, they play hard. It's a very it's a very good team, but I know we can come out, we can compete. We can, we can come out and play our best ball. I still feel like out of the four games we have played as a whole team, we still haven't played our best game yet as a, as a whole team. So this would be the perfect game to come out and have a great performance. Patrick, it sounds like maybe entering the Boise game, y'all were maybe a little bit too hyped and you mentioned that turning into some little mental mistakes. So how do you guys find that balance of showing up and getting amped up for a rivalry game, but also just being able to play your best ball and even be even killed and stuff. You know, we just have to go back, look at film, look at film, look at the mistakes we made and just try not to come back with uh, the same approach, you know, knowing that we can't lose and just we just got to come back this week, go back to work and just really uh, pay attention to the small things, small things, attention to detail and I feel like we'll be successful. Eric Ajay Salveson, how frustrating was that offensive performance on Saturday for you guys, especially as your defense continued to give you guys chances? Yeah, I mean, obviously, like Coach Anderson stated earlier, we moved the ball really well. It just came down to, um, you know, executing when we got to the red zone. You know, unfortunately, our defense played an outstanding game. Um, kept us in it the whole time and you know we we all felt like we were right there the whole time ready to you know make another comeback at it <clears throat> unfortunately it didn't go that way um, second half I feel like they you know they did a good job making some adjustments um, we didn't really execute well in the second half on third downs and um, but I mean in a game where you only have three points to still outgain the other team in yardage is, you know, still something to be happy with. Um, so some frustrating things, some good things, but uh, we'll uh, watch the tape today, you know, with coaches and, you know, correct what we need to. Derek Alvarez from KBA Radio, you're a Utah guy. How much does this game mean to you to play a BYU or have a chance to play an in-state rival? Yeah, this one means a lot to me. Um, I know quite a few guys on their team. Uh, I was recruited a little bit by them. Um, so this one, this one does mean a lot. You know, I think importantly, we just got to make sure that we, you know, get better from last week. Um, you know, it's still a long season. You know, I, I still think that, you know, our, our chances in the Mountain West are, are good. Um, but you low know, battery, you know, looking at this game with what's in front of us, you know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good, good atmosphere here in Logan in state rival top 15 team. Um, they're going to be energized. We're going to be energized. It's going to be a fun time. You get to go head to head against any of the guys, you know, any of them be defensive guys, secondary guys that you might play against. Um, most of them are, you know, some of the offensive guys um, and, you know, some linebackers. I don't really know any of the defensive backs. 
um, too well. So you guys said going into the year that you'd have this really good offensive receiving core. I mean, and obviously DT is great, but all of you other guys have made some plays. What is it like to be a part of that where other teams can't maybe, you know, if they double team him, they can't take care of the rest of your what's that like? Yeah, I think that's you low know, battery. I think it's I think it's good for all of us. Um the more that they do to try and stop one guy, the more it's gonna open up for everybody else. So um at the end of the day, you know, DT is obviously super explosive, really fast. But, you know, I think that we've proven that there's more of us in our position room that can make plays when we need to. And um, hopefully we continue to show that the rest of the year. It's really hard to um i mean i think that so far you know up to the boise state game i feel like we did a pretty good job in the red zone you know scoring at least coming away with points whether it be you know a touchdown or a field goal um when you get down into the red zone, obviously the field condenses even more. You know, the defense has, you know, the back line of the end zone to help them. They don't have to drop as far. You know, they can help, you know, some of the safeties, those bigger guys that they had were able to help fit in the run game more effectively down there. Um, and I think, you know, I think it just has, you know, I think it just came down on Saturday to the execution um, on our part once we got down there. Yeah, I think I, I think that's going to help us a lot moving forward. They were kind of the first team um, to come out and try and press us a lot. We saw some, you know, long corners at Washington State. They pressed a little bit, but definitely not as much as Boise did. Um, and, you know, like I said, I think that moving forward, you know, having faced that, you know, if we face that again, um, it's going to help us be more prepared, you know, on, on how to handle that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I haven't really dove in yet to, you know, watching film. Obviously, I've watched their games when I can you know, on TV, I think they have a very athletic secondary. Um, they're, you know, obviously going to do, you know, what they can up front to, to cause some disruption. They're big, they're going to be physical. Um, I think it's kind of going to be similar to what we faced, um, this last week against Boise. So. Yeah, um, I have a few. Um, one of them is a safety. Um, I'm not, I don't think he will be seeing any time. Um, I haven't really looked yet to see if he's going to be on any special teams. Um, you know, we've had a couple kids transfer from Utah State to there that I know, one of them also being in the secondary. Um, who, from what I've seen on TV, you know, is going to be playing, you know, quite a bit um, in the nickel position. So, you know, there's been a few times so far being here that I've, you know, had the chance to play with and against some of my Snow College teammates. Um, that's always a good time. Uh, right now, I'm on kick return and punt return. Well 
Yeah, I think that we, you know, executed what we need to. Um, they executed as well. You know, I feel like, you know, we, we missed some opportunities in the return game. Um, it's always kind of bitter going back and watching, you know, some of the kick returns and punt returns and stuff like that when, you know, you go back and you see, you know, if one more person could have got their block here or, you know, there was a crease here. And so we had our chances in the special teams to make some plays. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we, we missed a couple opportunities.